The Long Haul Podcast, America's Irish Voice. Interviews with inspiring immigrants, renowned Irish personalities, and discussions on all things Irish America. Presented by Michael Dorgan. New York play Leitrim in the opening round of the Connacht Senior Football Championship Saturday with the Exiles looking for their first ever win in the competition having first entered the tournament back in 1999. Excitement is building in the Big Apple with many pundits believing this is the strongest New York panel in a number of years with new additions this year including Rob Wharton and Gavin O'Brien from Kerry, Owen Cairn from Galway, Bill Maher from Tipperary and Shane Carty from Dublin who is commuting from Boston. Boston to hook up with the squad. Odds on New York pulling off the upset have been slashed from 13 to 2 into as low as 9 to 4 with ball sports. One negative for the panel is that they have not played any competitive or challenge games ahead of Saturday, whereas Leitrim have just finished off a full schedule of Division 4 league games. In this podcast, I interviewed Niall Medine, who has been one of the top forwards in the county in recent years. Niall has played at inter-county level for County Down and plays with Kerry New York here and also drafts up to Brooklyn Shamrocks. Stay tuned for more interviews later today with Shane Carty and New York manager, Johnny McGinney. How's preparations been going so far? Yeah, it's been going good. Look, we've been training very hard. Just looking forward to the game now. You know, it's been a long four months. You know, out, out since December, just just before December, doing doing work in the gym and stuff. So we're, we're just really looking forward to it. Uh, now, stepping our preparations, you know, getting a bit more of a game plan in place now. So, you know, hopefully everything goes well. Talk me through the, um, your timetable for the last couple of months. You were back in December, was it? And how did you do strength and conditioning? And then did you pick it up? What was the kind of time frame there over the last couple of months leading up to? Yeah, so just before Christmas, we we, we had a couple of uh, sessions in the gym, you know, nothing major, just to get, get boys back into the swing of things, I suppose, training and, um, you know, doing a bit before everyone either went home for Christmas or done, did their own thing for Christmas, you know. And then we started back the second week of January and, you know, you do your, you know, conditioning. Then you know, out in the field, getting the legs back under you, and then we stepped it up into football and and more and more as you go on, like progressing, hand passing, tackling drills, stuff like that. There, so. And so, leading up to the Leitrim game, um, of course, the Achilles heel with New York every year is the lack of competitive games. Last year, you played Salt Hill and Loch a couple of weeks out. You learnt a lot from that, I gather. Uh, no game this year. How big of a hindrance is that to towards your preparations? Uh, I think it just. It's, it's whatever way you look at it, you know, I suppose, you know, years gone by that we haven't had other games, we've been very competitive too, so, you know, it's we've had been train, training games there among each other, which have been very competitive because, you know, at the end of the day, no one's guaranteed their place as of yet, you know, uh, the boys picking the team, it's going to be it's going to be very hard to, to choose a starting 15 there, you know, everyone's champing at the bit, but, you know, obviously the game last year did help us a lot and we learnt a lot off it, but, you know, it's the same thing this year, just unfortunately we didn't have that game this year, but, you know. And it's, bit, it's all been in-house games, do you play like every Sunday morning, is it the A versus B kind of a thing, is that how? Is that where you're getting your games from over the last we, couple of months? We play games there on a Sunday, but it's not always A versus B, because it is, as I say, it is very yeah, competitive yeah. for places this year, so, you know, you, you could be in it's this team one week and then the other team the next week, you know, it, it's just getting a look at different boys in different positions, I yeah. suppose, you know, at the end of the day, it's what the, whatever the management want, but, you know, the games have been very competitive, like, and it's it, everyone's really going for it. Like. So last Last year it was almost a reset in New York with Johnny McGinley coming in. You got that game last year, the Talton Cup last year as well. Uh, this year, do you feel there's be, be, the year a bit more settled? Do you know each other a bit more this year? Oh, definitely, definitely. I think, I think with any county team, whatever team, a club team or whatever, like if you have a new manager coming in, it's you're learning what way that manager wants to play. You know, everyone's got different tactics and stuff like that there. So, but I think everyone, you know, especially after what Johnny done with Barnabas, you know. Going back to back championships, it was everyone was really looking forward to getting in and working with Johnny, and you know he's obviously put his own own imprint on 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 the team as well. So, but it was great. It was it's been great, and obviously look, it's kind of just the same thing as last year, you know. But again, everyone knows each other a lot better, and you know integrating some new faces into. In terms of um, Leitrim, have you been following them a lot lately? They've been competitive this year in Division Four. Or have you been studying them much? Yeah, look, whatever we can, you know, 
you know, see of them. Like, you know, you kind of just go on whatever's on, you know, your GA go or something like that there. But, uh, yeah, we've been trying to read up on them as much as we can, you know, learn what players to look out for, stuff like that there. So, yeah, it's been, it's, we've had some things, but not too much. You know? I, I think, are you using it as to your advantage the way that they don't know enough about you and that you can, fo you can, you can study them where they, whereas they can't really study ye? Is that something that you're kind of like taking on board? Uh, yeah, no, I suppose, but, you know, we, again, we didn't see it. We haven't seen too much of them. You know, obviously they're not going to get to see us because yeah. we haven't had any games. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's it's kind of like every year with New York, you know, you, you're, it's, we're called the exiles for a reason because, yeah. you know, you turn, turn over so many players every year, like, you know, and it's, it's just, you know, on the day, you know, hopefully everything goes to plan, we perform well. How many years are you playing with the New York senior team now? Uh, now? So I moved out here in late 20, uh, 2018. So I, I came on. My first year was with the Mayo team. So I think this is my. I would have been fifth year, but obviously I've only played three years because the pandemic obviously shut us down for two years, you know. But this is uh, my fifth year in New York, third time actually playing. And how old are you now? I'm 30. 30, 30, yeah. And you played a bit of intercounty before you came out here, didn't you? Yeah, I was in with Down, played minor 21s with Down, and then finally made the step up to senior in 2013. Um, made my debut that, that year again, Derry, in the championship, so yeah. it was great. Uh, tell, me, tell me about your club at home, where you came from, uh, and uh, you just said there when you came out here. So where did you come from at home, and who's your club at home? So I'm from a parish just outside Newry in uh, County Down, a place called Savile. Um, loved growing up there, like it's a great spot. Uh, actually, my my mother is from there. My father is a is a blow into the area, but uh, yeah, no, it, it was great. I live right beside my cousins and everything. So um, yeah, played there all through underage, and uh, my dad was involved actually with the underage teams for you know ten years, you know and basically took me all the way to under 10 level and then after that there was 12s, 13s, 14s, whatever, you know, so it's uh, it's, it's a big club, you know, very big development actually, um, you know, very good facilities for the club as well, but we'd also uh, be a big handball club too as well, oh, so... Uh, did you play with that yourself? I did, yeah, yeah, uh, we actually were very lucky that way, we have uh, competitive leagues within the club that we, we all play and... Uh, you know, a lot of young people would have got involved with the handball in the off season because you know it's yeah. it's a great workout and everyone really enjoys it. Like, and did you play any other sports growing up? Uh, yeah, so I would have played a bit of rugby just oh, yeah. uh, on the, in the off season. Uh, more so when I was older, not really when I was younger. I would have played a bit of soccer, but I uh, wasn't really too much into it. Um, yeah. But yeah, just in the off season there, when it got to me, uh, like late teens, early 20s, I would have played a bit of rugby because okay. the, the club's actually just down the road for me as well. Yeah. So, you know, a rugby club, but... I'm seeing also university there. Is that a, Are you trying to promote them? As, <laughs> did, you, did you do a stint there? Uh, I did. I don't... Uh, three you should really put on <laughs> shows to New York top. I do. I was the New York top underneath. I, so, uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I spent three years at the Poly. Um, I actually went and done my trade as an electrician first and then uh, mm. decided I wanted to go back to school. So, yeah. Uh, I went back to the Poly then, uh, or to Jordanstown to do my deg degree in sports coaching. And did you play football there? Yes, played uh, t two, three years with uh, Jordanstown. Okay. Um, fortunately, we didn't win a Sigerson while I was there, but yeah. uh, it was a great experience. And what are you doing out here now uh, in New York? So I'm a building surveyor for a concrete company, uh, Glencoe. Surveyor? Yeah, surveyor for a concrete company, uh, Glencoe Contracting. Yeah. So, uh, Basically, my, my my club out here, Kerry, uh, got me involved in the job first. I was working for Trident, okay. and then I made the jump over to Glencoe uh, about two years ago now. So. That was going to be my next next question. Um, your fellow were club mates out here, Kerry, New York. Um, how did you get involved with Kerry, New York out here? And of course, you draft up to Brooklyn. Then Kerry, you're into me. You draft up to Brooklyn, uh, Shamrocks. How did all how did that all come about? Yeah. So when I first, uh, I actually spent a, su a couple of summers out here uh, in, uh, in the younger years. So I first came out in 2015 for a summer, and I played with Kerry. Um, the second year in 2016, I played with Donegal. Right. But when I was looking to make the move back over for good, uh, you know, I just felt that Kerry was the was the team to go to, and they took very good care of me when I was here. And um, I kept very friendly with a lot of the boys in the club, and you know, they got me into the job 
that I'm in now, thankfully, and it's it's worked out great. So I I just felt Kerry was better for the long term, like you know. I had to put it on record here as well, Niall, that I've been out here the last couple of years and I've played alongside you on, on both teams, but I have to say you've probably been, a lot of people would not argue with this, you've probably been the best forward out here for the last four or five years and you're playing week in, week out both games. You've not, you've a fierce craw for the game as well, uh, no doubt. Yeah, I just I suppose it just comes from being involved from a young age, like it's, it just keeps you close connected to home as well, like, you know, it's something every young lad in Ireland grows up playing as Gaelic. Yeah. Football or hurling, so. And your wife is at most games as well. I, I, I see her. She's a big supporter. Yeah, yeah my wife. She, uh, she, she's American. American. She, she's American. She's American. She's a Bronx girl, uh, born and bred. So, um, no, she loved it. Uh, she actually tried it out for a while, and uh, she, she enjoyed it. But uh, she said she likes it better in the stands. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, no, she's there every game. Uh, yeah. Rain, hail or snow, she's there, and uh, she just she, she loves the the environment over here at Gaelic yeah. Park. You know, coming over on a Saturday or Sunday, and you know, having a couple of drinks afterwards is always a good time. And she's actually got to meet a few people that you know she's very friendly with now and stuff because of because of the Gaelic. You know, and are you living in Wood on here? Yeah, I'm living in Woodlawn there. Uh, Big Irish contingent there. Oh, massive! Uh, so uh, yeah, I once I moved out here, I went straight to. Woodlawn, it was where it was comfortable. Uh, as you yeah. said, it's the home away from home for a lot of Irish Americans out here and, and Irish. So, um, yeah, it's just great. Uh, myself and Maria moved in together just before the pandemic. Uh, so, it's been great. She loves it over there. It's very close to her family, too. So, you've, yeah, as I just said, it, like, you've been consistently the best over the last couple of years, one of the best. Uh, you've won Player of the Year last year with both Brooklyn and Kerry, just putting that on record. Like, so, but it, it seems to you, t you take it on your stride. Yeah, it's just uh, fucking. Uh, I love the game, you know. So yeah. it's it's. Uh, look, obviously, Gary have uh, haven't haven't been the team that used to be this last couple of years. Yeah. So, but you know, hopefully with a with a new year, it'll be a new team, and hopefully big things will happen this year. Just getting back into the game uh, against Leitrim, um, how like how big of a boost will it be to New York here to get that first win? Haven't won since our de since we debuted in 1999. Fairly close last year against against Sligo. I think Leitrim drew them in Talton Cup. Certainly in with a big shout uh, in in the uh, against Leitrim. How big of a boost will it be, and how important will it be if we if uh, New York can get over the line? Oh, it'd be massive. You know, it's it's what. As we said, 99 was the first time we went into it, and we haven't had a win, so it's it mean everything to the community out here, to, to the Irish community, to everyone playing on the team. You know, it's what we've been working for for years. Obviously, you have a strong Irish American contingent on the team as well. Like so, this is what all that underage development has gone into, and it'd just be huge for the whole Irish community and the whole New York GAA as in, in general because. You know, it's it's been it's been two years in the making that we since Johnny came in, and you know, hopefully this is the the time to get over the line. How big a boost was uh, the hurlers went home at the start of January? They won their, the shield, the Connacht League shield, and the uh, the college lads won uh, the Carnival Clan Cup uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Like, are, are, do they factor into? Do they give you a boost? Like, uh, as you build up to this Leitrim game? Yeah, I think it just goes to show you yeah, anything's possible. You know, if, if you put your mind to it. So, you know, it's it's always in the back of your mind that you know these teams can win and you can win as well. Just it's a matter of going out there and. It on the day, like. You had a star a couple of weeks ago in which you I see uh, Jason Sherlock from Dublin was in which you did he um, say a few words to you? Yeah, just uh, he came and watched the training session and uh, basically gave us a few pointers on you know some things that he can maybe think we could work on and yeah. you know it was great to hear it from someone like him who's you know been been involved with all Ireland panels and been involved with Dublin through the years as well. So it was great. He just gave us a few pointers on how how we could work on things and you know improve for the Leitrim game. Yeah. Compared to last year and this year, you've had a few new additions this year. Uh, I see uh, Daniel McKenna is there. There's a couple of lads from Kerry there. Uh, would you, is it fair to say that you you've a stronger panel this year? Yeah, I would say we've maybe a slightly stronger panel. You know, obviously. You know the team we had last year was you didn't have too many boys that hadn't played together before because you know obviously COVID li limited you know the amount of people to come over but you know with New Year you've had a, a new crop of players have come into New York and it's uh, it's been great to you know integrate them into the team we probably have a slightly stronger team but you know it, it's that's great for New York because it means 
there's more competition for places and you know as I said I said at the start of the interview no one's guaranteed their spot you know everyone's pushing hard for places you know so yeah. uh, just finally uh, a lot of people ask me about the standard GA out here you've played into county you see it in the summer what's your own thoughts on the whole standard here like it's a it's a great hub of GA in the summer there's four games maybe on a Saturday four on a Sunday what's your all overall uh, view like what do you think uh, is different or what's your own perspective on the GA out here uh, yeah, I think it's great. I think actually, uh, senior is is becoming more competitive. You know, for a while there, some people maybe thought that senior had dropped off in standard uh, a bit, but I think now it's it's coming more and more back to what it was maybe ten years ago, where it is very competitive. You know, everyone's very competitive in the senior division, and the same can be said for intermediate as well. You know, intermediate and junior air football like they're fiercely competitive. Having played junior air myself in with Kerry. Back in uh, 2019, when when COVID hit, or or 2020 when COVID hit, like junior A was fiercely competitive, and that can only benefit the whole of New York going forward. And I, I played intermediate last year with Kerry, and it uh, or this last couple of years with Kerry, it's been fiercely, fiercely competitive too. So, you know, you see them teams that are going from intermediate into into senior and from junior A into intermediate. Like you know, any of them teams could go on and win uh, win this the division up the same year so it, I, I think it can only benefit New York going forward uh, as long as the competitive, competitiveness stays there like, you know. So um, against against Leitrim like it was a great performance last year he almost did it is the result everything this year is, is, is it about getting a win bottom line Oh yeah definitely you know I, I think no matter what game you go out to go out to play you, you go out to win it you know uh, you know, obviously we're going to put our best foot forward and try and do everything we can to make that happen. You know, and we, we at the end of the day, we want to win. Like it's selfish, but you know, like I, I want to win the game, and I think everyone else in the squad does too. Like it's a final question: Are you going to win? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, you know, hoping all goes well on the day. But right. yeah, hopefully. All right, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Oh, you New York girls, can you dance the polka? Stay tuned for interviews with Shane Carty and New York manager Johnny McGinney, which will be released later today. And don't forget to keep an eye on thelonghallpodcast.com for a full match report on Saturday's game. And when we got inside the house, the drinks were passed around. The liquor was so awful strong, my head went round and round to me away. You Santi, my dear Annie, oh you New York girls, can you dance the polka to me way? You Santi, my dear Annie, oh you New York girls, can you dance the polka?